Let's take a look at Visual Studio Ultimate Preview version. This version supports Windows 8.1 programming natively. If you're using Visual Studio 2013 Express for Windows 8 or Visual Studio Professional 2013, the process that we'll be going over today is exactly the same. Now, what we're looking at is the start page. The start page is important to me because it allows me to have a dashboard of announcements as well as some videos that I can watch. As students, I would recommend that you start watching these videos as we will be using quite a number of them and hiring managers want to hear that you have knowledge about these items. With that, let's click on New Project. We're selecting Visual Studio C++ Windows Store. You may have to hit a twisty to see that. You may have to hit other languages depending on how you set up your Visual Studio. Mine is set up to open for Visual, Visual C++. I select Windows Store and Direct X, Direct X App XAML. Now I'm going to Bruin. I'm going to type in the name for this app is Bruin. You can call it whatever you want. It won't make any difference in this project. So we type in Bruin Direct X and then click OK takes a few seconds for the application to build all the files. And now we have our Visual Studio open and ready for us to use. We see the Solution Explorer over here on the side and it's opened on my system. It could be closed. Solution Explorer may be on the right hand side for Visual Studio 2013 Express. If you want to have it on the other side, simply drag it over and dock it. It's that simple. Assets, in this case, are your logos. These must be changed before you create a Windows Store application. Your common file can includes the DirectX Helper.h and StepTimer. These are useful class classes. App XAML in 2013 contains many of the items that were contained in other files in 2012 for Windows 8. Next, let's take a look at our XAML. If you're not familiar with XAML, you need to get more familiar with it. In this case, you can see that it looks like XML and in all cases XAML looks like XML because it is. The text block is an output only device. Users cannot input using the text block. You use the text box to get user input. You'll notice that these are not named. That's not uncommon because you could use data binding. But for right now in this video we're going to name these. I'm going to set this equal to a name. So I'm going to call this text block, lowercase t at the beginning, demo. Now what I want to do is when I run this application, I want to be able to use my click, my app bar button click, to change the wording in our application. So now I'm going to right click on the app bar button and go to the definition. This is the click event. If you've used Visual Basic or C Sharp, you may recognize this from those products. In earlier versions of VC++, you didn't have this process of being able to have events automatically created for you. Now, I'm going to type in text with a lowercase, block, and you can see that the IntelliSense detects that I have a text control with a lower T and suggests it for me. Next, I hit the hyphen and a arrow. What I want to do is change the text in my text block. So the next thing I'm going to do is select text. Now I'm going to set this equal to hello world. After that, I need to add a semicolon. Let's run the application. Normally the application, if I touch the button in the app bar, nothing will happen. 
but we added code to change the text box that currently says hello from XAML, XAML, to hello world. We can see the hello from XAML is hidden by the debug information being shown on the screen. So I'll shrink it a little bit so you can see that it says hello from XAML. Next, I'm going to go to the bottom of the screen and sweep up, and there's an empty button. I'm going to press it. Now, we can see that the text has changed to hello world. In this video, I've shown you how to create an application that runs DirectX with XAML and how to modify a button on an app bar so that a text box text can be changed. Thank you.